Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial in Revit 2015 where we'll be looking at some of the new features of reinforcement. So it's quite an exciting release this one for um, reinforcement. It's one of the only, well the first releases where we can truly model and document our reinforcement bar. Now there are still some uh, limitations with the modeling side of things but at least now we can start to document our reinforcement. Okay so let's now take a look at some of these features. Before I model anything, I'm going to generate some um, reinforcement bars. So if you haven't used this, I'm going to use the content generator here. And what this is going to do is generate bars and shapes for my current standards. So first I'm just going to check that my regional settings are set to the United Kingdom, which they are. Obviously if you're from um, other countries, then you can go through and um, set your standard. That's what I'm interested in now. And now if I go to reinforcement bar shapes you can see I could create my shape codes for my particular standard or my reinforcement bars. Now what I'm going to do here is simply create all the bars um, for H 2005 and it's done. So let's start by creating a concrete beam. So we'll draw our beam in. So I'm going to make this beam perhaps 8 meters long to start with. We'll then create a section through this beam. Now you can place the reinforcement in plan if you want to. I'll show you how to do that shortly. But I quite like to start off by placing it in section like this. So I'll set my section to 1 to 10. Select the beam and you'll now see I have an option here to reinforce it. So we'll go to rebar. It's telling me here that hooks won't be included in the shape description which is great. And now I have my shape browser. So I'll start by putting in shape code 51. And I'll choose perhaps a B10 here. And we're going to put this in basically parallel to the work plane. Now I'm going to use the space bar here to cycle the hook. OK, and there's my first bar created. Now I'm going to change the cover here as well. Let's just make that uh, perhaps 50 mil cover. And there's my first um, reinforcement bar there. Now if I select this, let's take a look at the properties. You'll notice automatically that it has a rebar number. Now previously we had to rely on manually creating schedule marks, which would be very tiresome because obviously Revit structure would um, have different sizes of rebar with the same mark, which is obviously not what we want. But in this release now, what we have is something called reinforcement numbers. Now if I go into this, you'll now notice that what it's done is it's starting at 0, 1 here, and it's got one bar in use. Now I'm going to give this a petition. I'm going to say that this particular element is RC beam number 1. OK, and you'll see what the significance of that shortly. So we'll now continue to reinforce. So we'll go back to our shape browser, and we'll now start to get some zero zeros in get some 25s perhaps on the bottom and again I can snap that in there and let's distribute these okay so they've gone the wrong way if that happens you can simply just rotate them round okay and now if you say create similar and get your bar down there then it will distribute in the correct way so that is a bit of a bug with Revit actually that's the only way I've found to get around that particular issue OK, so they're the 25s on the bottom, so now we'll create similar, and perhaps we'll have some B20s at the top. OK, so we'll distribute those as well, and we'll have four bars along there. Now you'll notice that all the constraints are automatic, and this is parametric. So if I select the beam, and I now swap out the size, all the bar automatically updates, which is quite interesting. Let's also now go back and take a look at our reinforcement numbers. Okay, and you'll now see that we have two bars in use here. Yeah, so I've got bar mark 1, bar mark 2. Okay, all assigned to the, uh, the petition here. And again in here, I can actually put the petitions in there for all the bar in there. And all of that is now merged together, as you can now see, which is quite interesting. OK, let's take a look at the reinforcement bar. So if I go to 3D rebar here, there it is. And what I'm going to do is just um, select all of this. 
And this this is not a new feature, it's been around for a little while, but we can go into view visibility states here. We could say actually what I want to do is I want to be able to see the bar unobscured in all these views. Okay, and I want to view them as solids. Now also I want to see that unobscured in the level one plan, and you'll see the significance of that shortly. Yep, so there's my reinforcement bar. So I want to start by creating more than one link. So I'm going to distribute this link. Okay, so in here I'm going to set that up to be perhaps 150 at the start of the beam. Now I don't want it to distribute all the way to the end of the beam. So I can now pull this back a bit. Now as you do this and put it back, if you take a look into your properties window here, you'll see it's uh, totting up how many I've actually got there. Okay, let's just do a little bit, a couple more. Oops. Okay, sometimes here you need to use the tab key to actually cycle to the, the correct um, shape handle. Okay, so that's how many I want there. Right, let's now go into a south eddy version here, and I'm going to select these bars, and I'm going to mirror them yep, over the centre line of the beam. Right, now what I want to do is I want to now put some more bars in here. Now, I showed you how I created the bar in section before. What I'm going to do now is generate a little reference plane through here. Just give this ref plane a name. So I'll call this one RC Beam 1. And now I'm going to place some rebar in plane. So what we can do here is we can set our working plane to be RC Beam 1. If I select my beam and go to rebar, go and find my shape 51, you can see very easily I can place that in plane. So I'll place my next bar in there. We'll select that and again we'll distribute this. So we'll say a uh, number with spacing. I could do that if I wanted to or I could do maximum again. I think I'll do that perhaps with 200 space in there. Now what it does, again, you have these shape handles that you can drag. Now, in this instance, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Whoops, that's done with a 20. That's not what I wanted there. Let's change that to a 10. That's better. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually um, snap it there and snap it here. So, of course, now I've got a link. Um, I've got double links, basically. But you'll notice you get this tick box here. And what this does, it allows you to hide the first and last bar. And that's quite significant because what that now does, if we go into our 3D view in here, let's just um, make sure that this views as a solid. Um, so we'll ask all of that to view as a solid there. And clearly I want to see that in a level 1 plane as well. Okay, there we go. So that's now viewing as a solid. And as I say, that is quite significant because see, if I now change the length of the beam, that bar will just recompute, as you can see there. So, as you've seen, a section size will force Revit to um, redistribute and recompute the um, bar. And also, if I change the length, the bar will recompute. So, that's what uh, that feature is supposed to be used for. Right, let's now take a look at our reinforcement numbers again. So, now in here, I'm going to assign the same partition. Now by doing that, it forces those to merge together and you can now see we've got in RC beam here, we've got uh, 1 to 4 in there. Now, you'll notice here I can remove gaps as well. So that means if I model a bar and then I delete it, um, I can remove that out. So I'll show you what that actually is. So if we go into a section here and I now put another bar in, uh, this time I'm going to sketch a reinforcement shape. So it might be that I just want to draw another link in here, for example. OK, there it is. So now if we go into our reinforcement numbers, you'll see we've got this new one in here. Now, I'm going to merge it together like that. Yeah, so that's now using one of five. And now I'm going to delete it. 
back to the numbers you'll notice it's automatically got rid of that now if the sequence started to um, change so if I if, if I created more bars after that I could actually remove gaps and that would actually then delete any rogue um, rogue numbers that I don't require obviously if I've already issued the drawings then I wouldn't actually do that okay good so that's that first beam done now let's take a look at the schedule so if we go to the reinforcement schedule in here you'll see that everything is absolutely spot on so you can see I've got all my bar marks in there type and size number of bars shape codes and so on. Um, I have had to um, dot to this slightly. Um, I've got my, uh, my weights being calculated in here. Um, I've also got um, length of each segment and the rounding up and rounding down done as well as the bar mark. Okay so I'm going to now do a slab as well just so you can see that. So we'll do a, a very simple slab. Um, let's set our work plane back to level 1 for this. So we'll go for a structural slab, a little small slab in here. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll create some more reinforcement. Now, again in here, I can set the work plane that I want to use. Okay, we can then start to place um, bar in here so we can do it parallel to cover or perpendicular whatever we want to do here so I'm going to say parallel to work plane and I'll set my first bar in that way and my first bar in that way so again we can distribute this so I'll go to um, maximum spacing in there and I'm going to have 200s there and we can set that to 10 now again if it distributes the wrong way again we'll have to change that so I'm just gonna go in and produce a little section in there let's just rotate this round so we'll snap that in up on the cover up in there back to level one okay and we can then start to distribute that bar out yeah and you can see as I drag the shape handle here the bar distributes. Now you're starting to now see the problem we had in previous releases with Revit. It's showing every single bar which I don't want. So how can we get around that? Well we can select the bar. If you look up on the ribbon here you can now see we've got these new tools to actually allow us to select a particular bar that we want to display or simply show the middle one. Now in this case I'm going to select what I want to do here is show this particular bar here and then finish. So there's my reinforcement bar. Now I'm going to do the same thing um, with this down here, so I'm just going to get my section and flip it around the other way, like so. Take this bar here, okay. and what I want to do is I want this bar to be sitting underneath that one there. Again it will snap to covers. We can do a distribution on this, and again if it goes the wrong way round, you know the trick now, you can rotate that. And then we can put, pop these back up where they need to go. Okay, so let's go back into our level one plan again. And then these ones, we're going to use maximum spacing. Set that for 200. And again here, I'll be able to distribute those bars along as well. Um, let's just do that. Yep, number of spacing in there. 200 bar, 200, there we go. Right, okay. So, if I now, again, just show the middle bar there, what we can now do is start to detail this effectively. So if I go to annotate here, you'll see I have a line multi-rebar annotation. Now, I'm going to start by picking this bar here, and I'll put my range in. I'll just change my tag to be horizontal there. And there's my first tag. So exactly to standards as you'll see there. It all looks pretty good in there. What I'd normally do is change this to course as well. And if I put thick lines on you'll see I've edited my standard. So it thickens up the reinforcement bar. Let's now do the same. So we'll go back and uh, do it on here. So we'll go to multi-rebar. 
Yeah, we can select the bar in there and again distribute that. Now I'll do the same on the beam here. So I want to show the middle one there, middle there, middle there. Okay, and again here I want to select what I want to show. So I just want to see this uh, bar here. Whoops, let's do that one more time. So I'm just going to have to pick up on the top. Don't forget here we've got the top and bottom bars in. So let's show this one for there. Okay, and now if I come through and put my tags on here. Okay, so we'll pop this one in here perhaps. Let's make that vertical. Okay, so we've got that there. Now that, that's B20, so that's that therefore top. So if I pick these, you notice in here I can actually put in some comments. So I could put in here um, T1 for top one, and you'll see that that automatically marks that up. Now what's quite clever is that's automatically then transferred into my reinforcement schedule if I choose that to happen. Now you'll notice that the bar marks here, one, two, three, four, now I've got one, two again, and that's because now I'm I've put them into a different member. So if I now go to structure, reinforcement numbers in here, yeah, we can say that they all belong to the slab. Okay, and there we go. And of course the beauty with that is you can filter on these sort of things if you want to as well. Okay, good. So there's some of the new features that we've uh, we, we can actually st see and start to use within Revit Structure 2015. So you should be able to now start to um, detail and document your reinforcement. Okay, hope that's been useful. Thanks very much.